As we continue in our worship series, we want to remember that worship is all about Him. It's all about God. It's not about us. But there is an important place for us in the midst of worship. And and today we're talking about the we of worship or the importance of community in worship. We're talking about Time and time again, throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament alike, when God's people were called together, more times than not, they were called together to worship. They were called together to recognize the greatness of God. They were called together to do the things that God had set them apart to do. See, kids, kids seem to get the we. When, when kids are left to their own devices, especially young children, they generally get along. It's not until they learn from us, adults, that it's all about the us, it's all about the me, do the kids start to act like it's all about them. Jesus, time and time again, said, let the little children come unto me, or be like little children. In so many ways, he meant that that their innocence and their love and their acceptance and and their willingness to just be together without any any preconceived notions about rank or or, uh, about about hierarchy or or about skin color or or about anything. It's just them coming together to enjoy each other. In some ways, that's the picture that God really set for us as a church. Our scripture is Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Several years ago, this was our, our, um, our focus uh, scripture for the entire year, where we're talking about being devoted. And that's how it starts out. It says, the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Early on, it was all about the we in the early church. It was that coming together that that ignited the passion of each other. Where they did, they broke bread together and and they spent time together and they worshiped together and they worked together and they gave together together. But even in the early church, sadly, it became about the me and it lost its focus on the we. See, when it's all about the me, I lose sight of the we. Some people might say I have a big head, but I really do have a big head. And I could put that on my wall. It's actually still in the box that it came in. But I could hang that on the wall and I could look at it and go, yeah, boy, I tell you. (laughs) Really is all about me, isn't it? And I I could just, you know, go off in my mind about all the wonderful accomplishments I've had and all the things that I've been able to do in life. and, And, you know, the world would be better off if it were just a bunch of me's. But that's not true. See, when it's all about me, I lose sight of the we. When it's me, I've got blinders on. When it's we, we, we don't have blinders on. When it's all about me, I've got tunnel vision. When, when it's all about we, we've got broad vision. When it's all about me, I'm selfish. When it's all about we, we're selfless. And that applies to worship as much as it does to anything else in life. 
I want this or I want that or you know you should do this for me or we should do it this way because that's the way I like it. It's preference over purpose. I talked about that last week when worship becomes all about me. When it needs to be purpose over preference. Because it's really all about him. Now, we have an important part in the hymn because he's called us together to do worship. And it's not all about the me, and it's actually not all about the us. It's all about him, but it's the us who have the opportunity to do it. It's the we, the we, that that go on mission and... And share Christ's love with others as we've done in Lake Providence for six years. It's the we who take time out of their day to serve others and to celebrate together as brothers and sisters in church. It's the we that, that take time out of the day to, to go and to build a home or, or to nail a board so that someone else has shelter over their heads. It's the we when it's family and the ability to let other people into family and to love other people as family. It's the we when we come to worship together Sunday night, Sunday morning, Tuesday afternoon. But it's the me that see, yes, that's me, that seems to come back so often and Push the we out. That's our sin nature. Our sin nature is what Paul talked about taking off. He wants us to take off the old things and put on the new things. So so that we're not so focused on us anymore. Time and time again, I've, I've put a handful of verses up. But time and time again, as you go throughout the scripture, you find verse after verse and section after section about God calling his people together. And more times than not, it's about worshiping him. It's about his presence and his people coming together to recognize his goodness in light of the world. Matthew 18.20 says, For where two or three gather together in my name, I am there in the midst. I am there with them. See, Jesus said, it's important for you to come together. And when you come together in my name, when you come together to worship the Father, the smallest little we, is as grand as the greatest of gatherings. As long as the focus is where it belongs. See, and the focus is God. Now, we can go back all the way to the beginning. In the beginning, God took a me and made a we. We're all familiar with that scripture. Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 25 You want to take a minute and turn there, or you can listen as it's read. Genesis 2, starting in verse 18. It says, For the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky and had brought them to man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds, the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up that place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. 
This is why a man leaves his father and mother, is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. This is a picture that we often use for, for Christian marriage, one man, one woman. But this is also a picture of the church. In, in chapter 1 of Genesis, what we have time and time again, God saying, it is good. As he created, it is good. And after six days of creation, he said, it is very good. But when we transition to chapter 2, we find God saying, it is not good. Well, what do you mean, God? Did you make a mistake? No, he wasn't finished yet. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. And in the the account in chapter 2, what he talks about is that it's at that point that God created all of the animals and the the birds and the fish and, and he brought them all before man and man named them all and none was found to be a suitable helper, a helpmate, a support, an encourager, a partner for Adam. So it says, so God calls to sleep To fall upon Adam, he took one of Adam's ribs, he created woman, and woman was his partner. It wasn't until woman came on the scene that it was very good again. Because now man had a me and a we, he had a partner. And I said, this is also a picture of worship. Because it is not good for man to be alone in worship. Mankind, not just male, male, female. He created them, Adam, Hebrew, man. It's not that we can't worship by ourselves and have a wonderful experience. We can. But God has called us together. And it's together we are stronger than we are apart. Jesus chose 12 disciples, not one. He sent them out two by two, not alone. Paul always had companions as he traveled along his missionary journeys. David had Jonathan and Nathan as partners in his ministry. Joshua had Caleb. Elijah had Elisha. Moses had Aaron. And we have each other. It is better to be together than apart. We are stronger when we are united. We are wiser when we are community. We are able to battle against the slings and arrows of the evil one as a unit than as a lone soldier on the battlefield. That's that concept of, of we in worship. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 25 says, And let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds. Let us not le- neglect meeting together as some have made a habit, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Come together. Spend time together as brothers and sisters in Christ, especially together on Sunday, the day we choose to worship. The we in worship makes our worship wonderful. But see, we could gather together and just be a bunch of me's and not be a bit of we. Because we're all focused on us and me's. It's all about me today. I'm the only one who gets to stand up here and preach. Right? It's all about me. That's really why y'all come to hear me. You know, there's no other reason to get up on a Sunday morning than to come and listen to me. Right? 
No, that's not right. That's not the attitude that I need to have or should I ever have. It's not the attitude that you should have that they better sing my favorite song or they better do communion this way or, or they better do offering that way or nobody better be sitting in my pew. Thankfully, we've got a little extra room today, but... See, it's that, it's that attitude that keeps us focused on the me rather than the we. See, a we is almost always better than a me when it comes to worship. That's what we need to focus on as brothers and sisters in Christ. Coming together with all of our differences, with, with all of our uniquenesses, with all of our own preferences... And choosing to be one together before the Lord. Choosing to to act as one. I never marched in the marching band, but I have seen a couple times the marching band competitions on ESPN 12 or 13. I forget which channel. And, And you can watch these high school groups or college groups of men and women all playing different parts of music, all very capable of being a me, working together as a we. Because, especially with the really good bands, they move almost seamlessly across the football field. It almost looks like they're floating on liquid as they move into a a figure or a letter or a design. They had to learn early on that they weren't a superstar in marching band. It's us or nothing. Because if it's about me, and I choose to step out of formation so that everybody can see me, the whole thing falls apart. It's a beautiful picture of us. That's that's what God wants for us as the church. A group working in unison, moving seamlessly and fluidly across our community, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And coming together on Sundays or Thursday nights or or midweek and, and, and coming together worshiping and loving and encouraging and supporting and challenging and mending each other. I love the picture of the church as a trauma center or a triage unit in the time of battle. The soldiers are out there uh, fighting uh, on the front lines and, and someone gets injured and they're brought into the old MASH unit, Mobile Ambulatory Surgical Hospital. They're brought into the triage unit. Uh, they're, they're, they're brought into the trauma center and they're evaluated and they're handed off to the most adept individual or team in that unit to fix them, to help heal them. See, that's what church should be for us as well, an opportunity to come in broken and be surrounded by our brothers and sisters in love and, and, and through God's loving touch of our brothers and sisters and his wonderful healing spirit to be mended and healed. Not so that it can be all about me again, but that as a part of the us, I can now go back out onto the battlefield and fight for the kingdom of God. It's all about the we. So far in this series, we've talked about encountering God and how important it is that when, when he knocks, we open the door. That, that he invites that encounter, that it's his spirit, um, uh, in a sense, enticing our spirit to be drawn to him in love. But it's still up to us to open the door. And encounter him. Talked about how attitude is everything in worship. And, and that, that we need to come to, to God in an attitude of, of love and, and faith and, and, and humbleness. And how important it is to cast down our idols. The things that, that make me, me. 
and make me want to stand out as me. The, the I'm better than you stuff in my life, I've got to get rid of. I've, I've, I've got to set it aside so that I can be a, a greater part of the we. Uh, we have any um, Star Trek fans here? Remember the Borg Collective? There, there was this, this uh, cube in space <laughs> that was filled with people that this organism had collected and had melded into the collective. And all the Borgs worked together to accomplish basically taking over the universe until I think it was, I don't think it was Captain Kirk, it was Captain Picard that took care of him eventually. He actually became a part of that collective for a little while. All right. But again, another picture for our sci-fi fans about, about the togetherness and, and how the Borg was unstoppable, basically, until they could start taking it apart. When they started disconnecting them from each other, the whole collective fell apart. And that's what the devil wants to do here. He wants us to hold our idols high and have a haughty attitude and not worrying about answering the door because it's all about me. And, and as it becomes all about me, our, our collective as a church begins to break apart. We've got to keep it all about the we, the we of worship. We're going to continue in worship with more song this morning. And as we worship together, as we have in word and communion and offering and now more song. My challenge to you is to let your brother and your sister on your right and left join with you as we celebrate the glory of God. Let us be connected this morning as we celebrate the King of Kings. Amen.